Hello everyone. This is our continuation of uh, the lectures under polymers and we are dealing with unit 2A of uh, your engineering chemistry syllabus. Now uh, in this lecture we will be dealing with conducting polymers, the characteristics and classification of conducting polymers with examples, mechanism of conduction and application of conducting polymers. So before we move what is conducting polymers, we should be knowing that the majority of the polymers that we do, uh, that we see in our day to day lives like uh, the polyethylene, polypropylene or the polystyrene or polytetrafluoroethylene, the bakelite or uh, the fibers like polyesters or uh, uh, the dacron poly, uh, polyamides like the nylon 66 or nylon 6, whatever polymers that we are uh, aware of. Or we have dealt with in the previous lectures they are all electrical insulators so what do you mean by insulators that means uh, the term signifies that they are poor conductors of electricity now uh, the, uh, the the polymers like polyethylene or polypropylene or polystyrene we very well know that they are addition type of polymers and they are prepared from the monomeric units that are having a double or a triple bond now during after the formation of the polymers we know that the uh, the bonds the chemical bonds they are nothing but sigma bonds and the electrons involved in the sigma bonds are not mobile so if the electrons are not mobile or that means that there is no movement of electrons so that means the the the, the electrical conductivity will be really nil but for more than a decade from now, researchers have shown that certain classes of polymers which have conjugation exhibit semiconducting uh, properties. Now what is conjugation? That means the, uh, uh, the organic molecules which have alternating double or a single, the double and a single bond. And the most classic example of an organic molecule which shows conjugation is a benzene ring. We very well know that benzene is a highly conjugated system having three double bonds. So that means it has got alternating single and a double bond. So that is called as a conjugation. So that means the polymers which exhibit uh, uh, semiconducting behaviors, they must have conjugation. Now the discovery of doping led to a further dramatic increase in the conductivity of such conjugated polymers. So that means this conjugation, the, 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 the polymers besides having conjugation, if they are doped with uh, external agent, they, then there is a dramatic increase in the conductivity of such polymers and the values of conductivity increases to 10 to the power 5 Siemens per centimeter. We very well know that copper is highly conducting material and the, uh, it exhibits the highest electrical conductivity where the, the value of the electrical conductivity of copper is 10 to the power 6 Siemens per centimeter. So that means we have been able to achieve um, the conductivity in polymeric materials to, to values as high as 10 to the power 5 Siemens per centimeter. Now let me tell you what is doping. Doping is a process in which the polymer is um, uh, activated with a, a external agent. So that means it is either oxidized or it is reduced. Now if it is oxidized, that means there is loss of electrons, the polymer exhibits a positive charge. And if the polymer is reduced, that means there is gain of electrons, then the polymer gains a negative charge. So that means this charge carriers that is developed within the polymer because of the oxidation or reduction that leads to a increase in the conductivity of such conjugated polymers. So we'll be dealing with this concept that means the conducting polymers. So polymers which are which exhibit electrical conductivity are known as conducting polymers and one of the important characteristic of such conducting polymers is the presence of conjugation and then uh, such conjugated polymers they exhibit semiconducting behavior whereas you can increase the conductivity uh, of such conjugated polymers by a process called doping. What is doping? It is a process in which a polymer is oxidized or reduced so as to create charge carriers. And what is conjugation? It is the presence of an alternate double and a single bond.
Now what is this S per centimeter? It is nothing but Siemens per centimeter and it is a unit of conductivity. Now the poor conductivity of polymers can be explained by the band theory. So basically in general the polymers that we see in our everyday life are uh, electrical insulators and the poor conductivity of the polymers they can be explained by the band theory. Now the band theory it uh, helps to explain the presence of a valence and a conduction band. Now the, what is what is a valence band? The valence band are low uh, energy level molecular orbitals and these molecular orbitals are in a continuous uh, uh, presence. The presence the, the, there is a presence of uh, an innumerable uh, continuous molecular orbitals and such molecular orbitals are uh, having lower energy as and also such uh, uh, molecular orbitals they uh, are they contain the valence electrons and this is called as the valence band. Now what are the conduction bands? They are uh, continuous in there are continuous innumerable uh, molecular orbitals and they are having a higher energy level as compared to the valence band and they are basically empty that means there are no electrons in the conduction band now the band gap that means there is a gap between the valence band and the conduction band and the band gap uh, determines the conducting or the insulating properties of the materials now let us see this diagram this diagram will help you to explain what I said just now in these lines. So, in the uh, this this uh, this is nothing but the um, uh, four. It is belonging to four different classes of materials. So, A, B, C, D. Now, let us deal with the A. Now, in A, you can see that there is a valence band and a conduction band, and this valence band and conduction band is. Um, there is no band gap between the valence band and the conduction band and the, band, the this valence band is partially filled or it is containing only one electron. So that means this um, uh, the, the properties of this material is highly conducting and uh, this electron can easily move from the valence band to the conduction band giving rise to high electrical conductivity of uh, such materials and usually metals they exhibit such type of uh, such type of uh, phenomenon. Now let us come to the second category. Here also we see that there is a valence band and a conduction band but there is a overlapping of the two bands. So this uh, uh, this is usually present in a divalent metallic conductor. Now let us come to the third category here also there is a valence band and the conduction band but there is a significant presence of a band gap. Now this band gap the high the the large band gap it results in the insulating property of the materials now let us come to the fourth category here we see that again this has a valence band and a conduction band but the band band gap is significantly reduced so this belongs to the semiconductors now the polymers, the, the polymers like poly, polyethylene uh, or polypropylene or uh, the polystyrene. Now all these belong to the, the third category. So that means they are all insulators. Now then what is responsible for the conducting nature of the polymers? As I explained in the first slide, the first criteria that the polymers uh, to behave as conductors that is there should be extensive conjugation now what is conjugation that means it, it should have uh, uh, the presence of double and single bond in continuation now this conjugation it causes the mobility or delocalization of the pi electrons across the entire polymer carbon chain now examples of such uh, polymers having extensive conjugation are polyacetylene, polypyrrol and polyaniline. Now the extensive delocalization of pi electrons over the entire polymeric backbone results in the formation of valence band and the conduction band. So the, although there, are, there is a presence of valence and the conduction band but there is a significant band gap that results in the semiconducting properties of such polymers. Then what causes the conducting nature of such polymers? It is the electrical conductivity in such polymers results only after appropriate application of heat and light.
Now, on the application of uh, heat or light, what happens is that the electrons that are present in the valence band, they get sufficient energy to jump the band gap and reach the lower energy levels of the conduction band, resulting in electrical conductivity. Now, examples of conducting polymers are polyacetylene, polyphenylene, vinylene, polyaniline and polypyrrole. So you can see that in all these molecules, there are the presence of alternating single and double bond. Now here also you can see that is there is a double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond. In polyphenylene, vinylene. In polyaniline, again there is the presence of double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond. Again, this is continuing a number of times. Now, in the case of polypyrrole, again, you can see that there is extensive conjugation. Now, the, um, the, the polymers that we discussed in the previous slides, like uh, in these polyacetylene, polyphenylene, vinylene, polyaniline, polypyrrole, etc., they are called as in intrinsically conducting polymers. Now, such polymers have inherent double or triple bond in conjugation. They exhibit semiconducting properties at room temperature and the conductivity increases with application of heat or light. Now, let us come to a new topic that is a doped conducting polymers. Now, as I said that the conductivity of uh, the conjugated uh, polymers now that they are uh, they exhibit insulating properties or semiconducting properties at room temperature so you can increase the electrical conductivity of such polymers by the application of heat or light but then you can also increase the electrical conductivity to as to values as high as 10 to the power 5 siemens per centimeter by doping so doping is nothing but the addition of an external agent into the conjugated polymer and this results in a dramatic increase in the electrical conductivity. Now what happens in the presence of a dopant? You generate positive or negative charge within the polymer as a result of oxidation or reduction. Now when the conducting polymer is exposed to a Lewis acid, oxidation occurs. That means there is loss of electrons and positive charges are developed in the polymer backbone. Now this is called as the p-type doping. Now examples of such dopants are iodine, bromine, uh, phosphorus, uh, hexafluoride, etc. Now when such conducting polymer is exposed to Lewis base, reduction occurs. So that means there is gain of electrons and there is a negative charge developed on the polymer backbone. So this causes the n-type doping. Examples of n-dopants are ferric chloride. Now the movement of such, such charges uh, now, how, do, how does this charge move across the molecule? It is because of the resonance. Why? Because uh, the, 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 the charge carriers, they are able to move uh, because of the conjugation. And this process or this phenomenon is known as resonance. And this uh, movement of charge will always occur in the presence of an externally applied field. And such process gives rise to enhanced conductivity. So, I hope you have understood uh, about this concept. This is an entirely new topic for you. I am really going very slow now so that you understand the concepts. Now, this uh, topic will again be dealt with in our next upcoming uh, lectures lecture. And uh, I hope you have understood. If you have still uh, some doubts re related to this, we will be clearing your doubts in the interactive session. Thank you.